Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? What town, are, look that way, that way, right there. What town are you currently located in? Westchester, Colchester, Burlington, Winooski. Now be careful now, there is a Colchester in Connecticut, right? There is. There is. So uh, there's also a Westchester near there. And every state has a Burlington. So the sign on the highway out here is in Colchester, so that's my guess. Is that your final my, answer? My final guess. And that would be correct for $100. A serious threat to ham radio balloons with tracking devices. Bird strikes. Migration of geese. Global warming. Sidewinder <laughs> missiles. This is kind of like some recent news. And I would, I would guess D. Final answer? Sidewinders are tough. Sidewinders are, are, sidewinders are IR, though. Well, whatever it is, it's correct. Again, you don't have to look at the board. It's the same thing there. Sidewinders are All right, so be careful. This is a tough one now. Prefix of stations 50 miles north of here. Is it W1, VE1, VE2, or VO2? Now, you don't live here around here. here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think about what's north of here. Have you ever been north of here? Uh, I have been, yes. Okay. Not, not, not radio. Okay, so you, so you know what's up there, right? You, you know, kind of like English fades out as you get near the border? So what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's probably a VE2. VE2. Is that your final answer? Okay, good answers any. Well, that would be correct. 223.50 megahertz is in this band. 70 centimeters, six meters, two meters, one and a quarter meters. Do you operate on the VHF bands? Yeah, oh yeah. SD's one and a quarter. One and a quarter. Final answer. And that's correct. A former ham radio license class, no longer issued. Novice class, extra class, middle class, low class. Not to be confused with no class. Uh, I was one of these once upon a time. It's A, the novice class. Novice, final answer? Final answer. And that would be correct for one thousand yeah. dollars okay so let's see a summary of where we are so you're at the thousand dollar level there's all the levels that get up to a million so if you get anything wrong you revert back to a thousand but you can quit you can retire and you whatever your last level is so let us play the maximum power allowed on two meters is at 10 watts, 100 watts, 200 watts, 1500 watts. Could be an easy or hard one depending on your point of view. It's 1500 watts. D. D, final answer. You said D. Well, if you said D, I'm going to have to tell you that you are correct for $2,000. All right, let's move on. SO2R is a Polish contest station, dual core SDR receiver, single op two radio. Soda Summit in Europe. Have you heard of SO2R? <laughs> Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Oh, you're not a contester, I guess, huh? No. <laughs> well, you got three lifelines, so you can ask people. Uh, the, the answer's not up there. No, no. I'm just... <laughs> That's easy to read. So you, you can ask a, a friend. 
you can ask the audience, or you can do the 50-50 split. Also the 50-50 split. Okay, computer, take away two wrong answers. So we've got single op two radio to a dual core SDR receiver. C, single op to radio. You know, you know what that means? Uh, well, vaguely, you're correct for $4,000. Single op to radio is the crazy thing us contestors do. We have two radios and one operator. We have a guy doing two uh, single op, two computers. He's on both, both Zoom sessions. All right, so this may be even tougher for you. The closest POTA parks on the air park to Burlington, Vermont. And it's a stinker question, I'll, I'll tell you that. The Essex Tree Farm, Bob's Tree Farm, and it does exist, City Hall Park, or Sandbar State Park. And you got three uses of lifelines left if you have no idea where to go with this. I'm not, I'm not sure what the audience will tell you either. <laughs> it might be interesting. I think I know the answer. I think you know the answer, right? But you're not from this area, though. I am not from this area. Ah, okay. So you can use a lifeline, you won't have it for later, but at least, you know, if you get it wrong, you're, you're out. So you've got to, strategy is what counts here, of course. Somebody know back there what the answer is? Well, you, you can't pick, you know, you, yeah, you, you have to pick somebody uh, randomly, not somebody who's been there. <laughs> about five bobs in the room so all it's right like, so bob can bob can help me is that the point yeah if you want help or you can ask the audience and the audience will put up their hands on what they think it is well, bob if you can help me on this one you're gonna be a big help okay so we're gonna go uh, phone a friend phone okay a friend. okay bob the closest poda park to burlington vermont the essex tree farm bob's tree farm City Hall Park, Sandbar State Park. So again, the closest Poda Park that we're talking about. You got 15 seconds. Essex Tree Farm, right? Oh, wait a minute now. <laughs> he says you're asking Bob yeah, YFJ, right? So now, now well, we got, I, I will, we got I, dueling friends here. Yeah, I will guess A. So you're saying Essex Tree Farm, huh? So you know where City Hall Park is? It's uh, right in the middle of Burlington, actually. But it's not a Poda Park, so you are correct. And we've actually operated from all four of those parks. Yeah, Bob has a tree farm, but he's not a Poda Park either. Okay. All right, now, now we're going to get down to uh, what you really know. Fletcher Christian's great, 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 great grandson was VP4CC, VR5DX, VR6TC, VQ9XX. And I worked him, so I know... He's the real deal. You just got to know what the call sign is. Uh, you can, uh, you got two left, so you can pick uh, any one of the three. You can do the phone a friend again. You can ask the audience. You can do the 50-50 split, but they'll only give you two answers. 
So if you have an idea what it might is, the split may be better. If you have no idea, maybe the audience might know. And this is actually uh, Fletcher Christian's great, 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 great grandson. Actually, had two different call signs. It's just one of them. <laughs> audience, can you help me on this one? Okay, we're going to ask the audience. Okay, audience, Fletcher Christian's great, 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 great grandson was, how many say A, VP4CC? How many say B, VR5DX? How many say C, VR6CC? What, what does that mean? <laughs> how many say D, VQ9XX? I'd say this audience is a bunch of losers. Yeah, in they're not here. So, okay, again, how many say A, B, C, D? <laughs> so you got a C and a D. Bring, bring it back on R. All right. Well, flip, flip the four-sided coin. How about D? D, VQ9XX. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. No. It's uh, VR6TC, later became VP6TC, TC, Tom Christian. You got it. Okay. He, he, he was the head of the radio bureau on Pitcairn Island of all 60 oh. people, so he assigned himself his own, his own initials. But yeah, I did yep. work. I actually busted a pileup of West Coast stations. So uh, you uh, walk away with $1,000. Congratulations. Well, that's, that's a good day. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, who wants to be next to play? Hello, everybody. Do you know how this game works? Uh, no. We ask you questions, and you got to get the right answer. <laughs> Are we ready to play? Let's play. Who wants to be a ham radio millionaire? So these first five questions are pretty easy. Look over there, that way they can see your face. What hotel are you in? What hotel are you the in? The Hyatt, the Hampton, <laughs> the Holiday Inn, or the Bates Motel? Hampton. Hampton. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Okay, that's correct. <laughs> that was a tough one. The name Vermont comes from green money, green taxes, green fee. Look, look there. That's why we had that monitor there. Oh. Green fields, <laughs> green mountains. A lot of green in there. Green mountains. Green mountains. Final answer? Final answer. Yes. All right, here's, here's our tough question. They got it wrong last year. Let's see if let's see if we got better. Eastern Standard Time is offset from UTC, coordinated universal time, by this many hours now. I'll say B minus 12 hours. B minus 12 hours. Do you work HF? Uh <laughs> that would... I've been on HF, but I'm just taking a guess. So, so you're saying that the guys in uh, Europe are 12 hours behind us? Maybe. Or oh, we're 12 hours behind them, actually, what that means. Well, you know, in the UTC's Greenwich Mean Time, what time, what time is it in Greenwich Mean Time now? Five. Go with five. You want to go with five? five is that final five. answer? Did I, did I psych you out? Yeah. I made you go from the wrong <laughs> no. answer to the right answer, we'll the right see. answer to the wrong answer. <laughs> I do that. Five. Minus five. Final answer. Final answer. Correct. You'll never get that question wrong again. <laughs> oh, this could be a tough one. You're not on UH, VHF, UHF, right? 903.1 megahertz is in this band. Two meters. 70 centimeters, 23 centimeters, 33 centimeters. 33 so, centimeters. 33. You said that rather fast. D, final answer. D, final answer. That's correct. <laughs> a wolf honk. Now you're in New Ham. You may not know what a wolf honk is. I don't know. A wolf honk is meant to be used on bad operators to keep dogs quiet to hold the frequency or to increase power. So what is a Wuhan used for? It's old technology, I can tell you that. Hold the frequency. Hold the frequency. Okay, that your final answer? Final answer. 
Ah. No. <laughs> a wolf hong. Is that it, so it's hanging in the general uh, ARL general manager's office. It's something that was described by the original W1AW to be used on bad operators. On bad operators. And this is back in the 1920s, they had bad operators. And it was a, a horrible looking thing and nobody knows exactly how to look. It looks like something with two fingers up there and we're not sure how this is to be used on people, <laughs> but it's there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So we're looking for somebody now to take over his spot because he was in the lightning round. Anyone want to continue from here? All right, come on up. So, Craig, I can guarantee you that that question will not be on the test today that you're taking <laughs> later. <laughs> okay, and, and you are? Jamie Dennis, KB1MCU. MCU, and where do you live? Uh, St. Albans. St. Albans. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, so you reached the thousand dollar level and you haven't even broke a sweat. Yet. All I do is walk up to the front of the room. That's it. Okay, so we're gonna again look at the summary here. This is what we're looking at. You're at a thousand dollars. If you get anything wrong, you're gonna revert back to a thousand. As you keep getting right, you end up putting more money in the bank. Okay. Okay, so here we go. 3Y0J was a recent de expedition to Canada. Where did that come from? <laughs> Bove, Bonham Reef, Morania. Did you work 3Y0J? I did not. Neither did I. <laughs> did anyone work them? You did? Oh, you slime, you goddamn. All right. So you know where 3Y0J went to? No, could, but can I phone him? No. <laughs> well, he kind of already knows he knows the answer, right? You can ask the audience, but yeah, the, the audience has not been <laughs> doing too well today. <laughs> now, guys, don't call out the answers now. You just confuse them. Let's remove two of them because I, I I think I know. Okay, where I computer, go. take away two wrong answers. Ooh, it didn't do it. I thought I fixed it. Okay, uh, I will take away two wrong answers then. Okay, it would be uh, so the two left would be Bove and Bonham Reef. Well, stab in the dark here. Uh, I'm just gonna say Bove B. Bove B. Go back. To, go back to B. Is that your final answer? That's the final answer. Well, uh, that was a good guess because that's correct oh. for two thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, you're nice and warmed up. Let's. Okay. If it's too loud, just move to the other side because the speaker's right on top of you there. Let's go. In 1920, we ask all these old, old fart questions. Hams had to operate below 200 meters. This meant transmit below 1500 kilohertz, transmit above 1500 kilohertz, transmit with less than 200 watts, a glut of used meters, Below 200 meters. They had to operate. Yeah, that's what the question says. Below 200 meters. But what is the correct response to that? If you were a ham and you said you have to go below 200 meters, where do you set your dial to? Of course, back then they didn't have dials. But if I said today, if you had to go uh, below 80 meters, what would that mean? Are you on HF? Yes, I am. Okay. Or let's say if you had to go below 40 meters, what would that mean? So think of it from those terms. Or ask the audience or phone a friend, phone anybody. I'm going to say uh, B. B, transmit above 1,500 kilohertz. Yeah, that's uh, above the AM broadcast band, essentially. Okay. Is that your final answer? Yes. That 
would be correct for four thousand dollars. Yes, meters and frequency and megahertz go in opposite directions. Okay, we're on a roll. Let's see what we come up with next. The oldest continuous ham radio contest. CQ Worldwide. A R R L D X. The Stoop Perry Top Band or the A R R L Sweepstakes. Got break contests? Don't do a lot of contests. Well, ask the audience. Okay. This looks like a contesting audience. Audience, what is the oldest continuous ham radio contest? Is it the CQ Worldwide? Show of hands. Is it the A R L D X? Is it the Stu Perry Top Band? Is it the ARL Sweepstakes? Is it the Vermont QSO Party? How many say A? How many say B? How many say C? How many say D? Useless as you know what on a uh. bull. I <laughs> shot <laughs> That was not supposed to be one of the harder questions. You can use another lifeline if you'd like. You know, just use them up quicker. Uh, no, I'll just do C. We'll see where that goes. C, the Stu Perry top. Well, if you said that, you would be wrong. C no. That would have been two wrong guesses. It's the ARL sweepstakes dates back to 1933 or thereabouts. That's the original granddaddy. That's the contest where you're actually sending traffic. You're sending that long exchange. So very good. You get $1,000. And uh, you look like you need some work on oscilloscopes. Thanks. Thank you very much. OK, this is Paul AA1SU. You may have heard of him. Are we ready to play? So you know how this game goes, right? All right, this is a tough one. The grid square you're in right now. Look at the monitor there. FN33, FN34, FN35, FN44. Think carefully now. It could be tricky. He's scratching his head. <laughs> um. D sounds kind of sexy. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna go with. Look there, it's there. I'm gonna go with B. FN34. FN34. He says that would be correct. The capital city of Vermont, Windsor, Burlington, Mount Peculiar, Montpelier. Oh wow! I used to know this. <laughs> I generally stay away from it. Uh, I'm gonna go with D. D, Montpelier. That is correct. A short, helically wound VHF antenna is often called a muddy pole, a mag stick, a rubber duck, a dummy load. That's what they call contests. That's what Bert calls contesters. Contesters. He calls it the dummy load a contester. I'm going to go with C, rubber duck. Rubber duck. That would be correct. QSOI means get out of here. Transmit now. Talk faster. Change frequency. Wow. Q signals. They still use those? I'm going to go with D, change frequency. Change frequency. That's correct. CQ means calling anyone. Work me, please. I need a QSL. Help, I'm lost. All of those could be correct. <laughs> I'm going to go with A. Calling anyone. And that would be correct for $1,000. Yes, you should be. Oh. 
because I moved the chair. Okay, so here's where we are. You're at a thousand. The, the next, uh, so any, anything you get wrong, you go back to a thousand. But if you can get the next five right, you hit thirty-two thousand. But the questions will get harder. So here we go. The World Radio Team Championship will be held this year in Salami, Bologna, Prosciutto, Liverwurst. B. B. Bologna, or actually Bologna. Yes, that is correct for $2,000. AM4 TV is a ham station in Southern Florida, the Virginia ATV Club, Madrid, Spain, Karachi, Pakistan, and I did look it up, so I'm correct here. So be careful here, make sure you uh, pick the right answer or ask the audience. The audience has not been, uh, <laughs> not been terribly helpful today. Uh, AM4 TV. Did you work him? No. <laughs> I'm going to go with B. B. The Is that your final answer? You don't want to check anything? No, I'm going to go home. All right. B. Final answer. How many think he's right? Nobody. <laughs> Southern Florida. No. It's Southern Florida. No. Madrid, Spain. Oh. AM, is, AM is not in the U.S. block. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Now, um, we have an opening for someone to come in and take his place because we want to run the board here. Who, uh, who would like to come up? All right. Let's go to the next question. Let's see what we got here. You didn't win $4,000, obviously. QLF means, are you, are you CW? Yes, I do. Okay. QLF means let's have fun. Yes. Move to a lower frequency. Ready to send. Sending with left foot. I'm going with D, sending with the left foot. D, is that your final answer? It is. Strange as it seems, you're correct for $8,000. Yeah, someone says, it can't be that. Yes, it actually does. All right, let's go. An extra class station working JA1 QVR on 7.126 megahertz will likely receive the JA, that's Japan, JADX award Japanese ads, a bill from the QSL Bureau, a notice of violation. And, and this is again, we're talking stateside here. Okay, I'm not very familiar with the uh, US band plans, but. We can ask the audience, but. <laughs> I'm, on that one, I'm gonna ask the audience. I know uh, the voice bands are quite high up on the, I think it's 150 or 130 for voice on 40 meters. So I'm gonna ask the audience. Okay. Audience, what is he going to get? Uh, extra class station on 7126 megahertz will receive the JADX award, Japanese ads, a bill from the QSL Bureau, or a notice of violation. How many say A? How many say B? How many say C? How many say D? Looks like a little bit of a split. Well, I'm gonna go with the audience on this one and go with the D, a notice of violation. It seems too way too low for a voice in the US. Okay, notice of violation. That would be correct for sixteen thousand dollars. So the band ends at seventy one twenty five. If you're on lower side band, you gotta be above seventy one twenty eight to be in the band. One twenty eight. Jeez. Yep. Where's in Canada? Canada, you can go down to like 70, 7,100? In Canada, we have a band plan, but it's, uh, it's more of a gentleman's agreement. It's not legally binding, so we can... Do whatever you want. Technically do voice. No rules, just right. In the right frequencies. Okay. 
Here we go to the next one. A four-bit counter will count this many times. 9,999, 1,000, 16, 32. That's an easy one. I'm going to go with the C16. C16. Final answer? Yes, sir. Correct. For 32,000. So you've broken into the next thing here. So guaranteed for 32,000. So I guaranteed the 32,000. Guaranteed 32,000, even if you bomb on the next question. All right. Here we go into the third round. Five amps going through a 50 ohm carbon resistor will produce high SWR, a short circuit, back EMF, a lot of smoke. You know your uh, electronics? Yes, sir. Doing the calculation in your head. What rating uh, is the resistor rated at? How much power can uh, it handle? All, all we know is it's a carbon resistor. I'm going to say a lot of smoke. Usually, usually a resistor that rating would be uh, would be wire wound, I guess. So. Right, that's why it said carbon. Yeah. So you say D, final answer. Final answer. Correct, for 64,000. So yes, carbon resistor. That's 250 watts. Carbon resistor is about a couple of watts. So, yeah, that would be smoke, and the smoke detectors would go off and all that stuff. We used to do that a lot. and I used to do it in classes, but I didn't want to be on the wrong end of a fire hose, so we stopped doing it. All right, let's go on. A U.S. station using a three-element Yagi on 60 meters. Here's another, <laughs> another rules question. Three-element Yagi on 60 meters can use approximately this much power. You got 60 meters in Canada? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. So you can you we you can have a maximum of 100 watts uh, equivalent isotropic radiated power. So okay, so you're gonna have at least 3 dB. So you got 10 watts, so 25 you're have about watts, 6 dB of gain. So you need a, you need to be at most transmitting 25 watts. So my answer would be B. 25 watts. Final answer. Final answer. Hmm. Well, I did a quick calculation, and I would say you're correct. Thank you, sir. For 125,000. Yes, I, uh, three element beams about 6 dB, four yeah. times, and you have to go four times less. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. So you, you guys have the same rule we do. Pretty much. All right, very good. Let's keep going. After CQing on 3885 kilohertz, he might play Hotel California. Is it KA6LMS, WB6ACU, W6EAG, WB4KCG? I don't know any of those guys, so I'm going to have to go with 50-50. Uh, okay. Do you know anything about Hotel California? It's a nice song. Nice song. Okay. Well, you have any idea who does it? Any what? You have any idea who sings it? Oh, no, I don't, I don't remember the, the name of the band. Ah, okay. Too bad. All right, 50-50. Uh, computer take away two wrong answers. So you got K, K6LMS and WB6ACU. Both have sixes in the call sign. So They're all both in California, yeah. Uh, well, that, yeah, that kind of seems that way. Okay, on this one, I'm going to... And the guy is an active ham, and I do see him at ham fest all the time. <laughs> Or you can ask the audience, or... I'm going to take a guess on this one and go with a KA6LMS. KA6LMS, final answer? Final answer. No. Uh, KA6LMS is last man standing. Uh, Tim Baxter uh, from the show. It's WB6ACU is Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh, okay. He, he was uh, the guitarist for the Eagles. The Eagles, right. And he is an avid AMer. Very nice. So very good. Excellent job. Thanks, sir. My pleasure. Okay, guys. Um, th this is the end of the uh, the formal program. Uh, guys, have any any comments or anything that you, you'd like to uh, share about uh, Hamcon? 
Or you guys are going to be just like in the game show, nobody's going to say anything. We got you all in one room here, so we might as well, you know, maybe we'll do a little singing or something. So, no comments, no nothing? Well, thank you for coming out. And we will do this all again next year. Thank you.